Hello folks, welcome to my YouTube channel, Watercolor Impressions. I've been doing a quite a lot of winter paintings. I thought I would do atmospheric winter painting. Before you go, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video updates from our channel. And uh, let's get started guys. As always, I'll provide the drawing template and reference. Check my video description to download it so you guys can follow with me. And I have done a lot of uh, tutorials on how to draw, so I'm going to keep it really simple this time. So let's go down and uh, throw down our first wash and you can see I'm also keeping my drawing really light so it doesn't show through when the painting is done. So I'm starting up with a cooler wash at the top and I'm also mixing a little bit of white paint in it. So the consistency is really good on it. So as it comes down I'm going to warm, uh, warm the wash a little bit. So I'm using raw amber for it and this is the first wash. This is just to uh, see where everything sits and I'm also leaving some white bits here and there so that it kind of gives an idea and clue where, where to put our wash. So I'm also connecting that uh, background to the foreground and if in the snow if you see the ground the ground is really a tricky part to paint but I'll keep it really abstract and I'll change it quite a bit uh, to have a little bit of impression like, uh, impressionist as possible. So before it dries out, I'm going to do another wash, it just clean uh, gray water and I'm going to bring all the way to the down and you can see I'm also using a little bit of uh, white paint in it. And before it dries out, I'm going to paint something on top of it uh, right away with my, this is called wet on wet technique and I'm just going to put down my, uh, the mid-ground building and the building which are connecting from that point, it's going to be connecting the foreground as well. So I'm making sure that I'm keeping it really light. I'm also focusing on the bigger shape first. I'm not worried about details or anything like that. I'm focusing on the major shapes. Whenever you paint, this is a really important thing to do. Because a lot of beginners, when I started painting, I tried to focus on the smaller details uh, on my painting. Uh, but the major important thing is the shape which exists in your reference. So that's the one thing you have to focus on. And rest will uh, come in place once you uh, take off your major shapes first. So I'm trying to connect the background to the mid-ground road uh, because that's really important. Let's focus on the building in the foreground and uh, this is also a really good um, leading element for us. So this is going to be our second wash and I'll introduce the darker pigments at the end so that I can get a little bit of details in this foreground building. So for the first wash, I'm using uh, a lot of uh, warmer colors like burnt amber, or amber, and you can also see I'm also putting this uh, violet uh, with a little bit of white in it, and that's going to act as uh, glasses on the building. And I'm also connecting the shape to uh, the building uh, in the midground building as well. And sometimes I do this, I use my nails to put some lines here and there to enhance some details. You can see even though there is the second floor and third floor it's not connected by a connector in a way because it also acts as a really good composition element. So now uh, on the left hand side, so I want to make sure that I'm getting the perspective right. So um, I start with the dark wash at the top and uh, before it dries out I'm going to connect that with uh, the buildings on the left hand side. And you can see there is a lot of variations there but I'm making it as one shape. Then I will introduce a little bit of a darker and a lighter tone on it. And at the bottom, I'm introducing a lot of uh, uh, violet and with a lot of white in it. So that it doesn't, um, it looks like another you know, shop there. And now I'm introducing the the third wash. So this is going to give some little bit of uh, shadows and highlights as soon as we introduce these darker tones underneath this uh, building in the foreground and this also helps to create this 3d look on the buildings as well if you leave it as it is it's going to look weak and uh, it doesn't show the story of a building so i want to make sure that i add that as well so since uh, my left hand building is still wet i'm trying to introduce a little bit of darker tone in there so once i'm happy with it and i'm going to introduce um, a little bit of white at the background so in the foreground, uh, this is a really important element in our scene because this act as like uh, literally in the foreground. So I want to make sure that I get as dark as possible and it also creates this depth from foreground to the background. And uh, I also gave him a shopping bag uh, like so that he can uh, stand down. And in Toronto, they have this bike racks uh, which also can be act as a perspective element to show perspective in your scene. But 
once I added that, I kind of changed it at the end because I added a guy in there so that uh, it kind of looks like, you know, he was opening the car door. So now I'm adding this uh, street pole. So this is really important uh, in any kind of cityscape or landscape you do because this helps to uh, create this uh, perspective using directional lines. And you can see I'm also wearing the shapes in a such a way. And even though it looks different there, I'm trying to change it. You get like only one stroke to do this. If you make it wrong, you make it wrong. Still, uh, even though I'm painting for a bit now, even though I have to have difficulty is uh, doing the straight lines and it have to be crisp and it doesn't and it have to be thinner as it goes in distance and it have to be thicker in the foreground and that's how perspective works in real life you can see i'm trying to add this line and it also really seductive you want to do more but i usually recommend not to do more and make it uh, really simple and show that you know there's a little bit of uh, uh, perspective in your scene using directional lines and there's this little bit darker tones in the wires helps us to give this uh, really nice elements for the scene. And I also added that and I'm making sure to add some eyelets for uh, the light and the, the street light in the foreground. So now I'm focusing on the sign on the buildings which are on the left hand side. And I'm also making it really dark as possible. And this uh, orange uh, stripes which is hanging onto the street pole it's really good for our scene because uh, even though if you see the reference, there's not that many colors in the scene, but I introduced a little bit of colors in my scene to show that, you know, it doesn't look boring. Because if you paint as it is, it's going to look monotonous and it doesn't look that good. And I also squinted my eyes and I noticed that my uh, foreground, the road looked really weak. So I'm just doing some dry strokes to show and answer a little bit of perspective and there's a lot of dirt in the road. I'm, I'm telling to myself when I did this not to overdo it. I'm trying to keep it really minimal as possible. And there's also overcast shadow uh, casting on the road. I'm also adding that as well. And um, in the foreground, and I also add a little bit of uh, directional lines as well. And now uh, the snow in the, uh, in the mid ground uh, dried quite a bit. So I'm using white paint to bring back some of the eyelets back. So as soon as we added this eyelets, um, Using white paint, you can see uh, it looks like it's snowing in our painting. And it's also really necessary to add some eyelets for the figure or else it's going to blend with the blend with the painting itself. And I'm just squinting my eyes. I'm just putting wherever I can see the snow deposits. I'm also adding it and I'm making sure not to overdo this as well. Uh, the key point in any, any kind of painting you do is not to overdo it, not overwork it. But... Uh, it's kind of blessing in disguise. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And uh, it's a matter of fact of doing a lot of painting and getting comfortable with it. And in the foreground, uh, I should have left it as it is, but uh, vanity prevents it. I'm keep adding details in there. And I'm also adding some uh, air highlights. Quickly, we came to at the end of our painting session. But you can see uh, the approach is really easy. Uh, the key things whenever you paint subject like this is to uh, making sure we connect the shapes and have some faith and confidence and keep going until you see the end result. There are times I feel that the painting didn't work when I started my painting or else it doesn't make any sense but till at the end once I put all the details and everything the painting come alive. So whenever you paint or skate keep going till you finish uh, seeing the end result. So it's a matter of fact that, you know, adding those eyelets, um, but making sure to keep it minimal. So I'm taking the tape to show uh, how uh, the final painting looks like. Even though I finished the painting, the next day I looked at the painting, there was something lacking in my painting. So I went again and did this. Thanks again for watching this Winter Storm video tutorial with me. Let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section. If you want me to cover any other subjects in watercolors. Write me at watercolorimpressions at gmail.com or comment below. Before you go, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video updates from our channel. And please do share with your friends and family. And uh, good luck with your painting, folks.